All those quarterbacks who look like they throw with anticipation, like the game just comes to them easy, they're just reading coverage. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about right now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, former 11-year pro quarterback and quarterbacks coach here at EliteAthletesTV.com. Today, I want to talk to you about why, as a quarterback, you need to learn how to read coverage. There's a lot of debate going on over whether you can just run pure progression between the air raid system and the run and shoot and the West Coast and all these different systems. In high school, you get this R4 system. And there's a lot of those systems that run pure progression. Sometimes quarterbacks will run into trouble when they're just working pure progression. We're going to hit the film in just a second because I want to show you why as a quarterback it's so much better to learn how to read coverages for anticipation than it is to go through a progression read. But first, if you haven't done so yet, if you're new to the channel, if you dig football content, make sure that you subscribe and ring that bell. Get notified every time we have new stuff coming out. If you're ready to understand why you need to read coverage as a quarterback, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you your thoughts on understanding offense, working X's and O's, anything going on in the game of football. Love to hear from you. And finally, please share this video out. We're trying to help young athletes all across the country. The more you share this out, the more young athletes we can help, and I appreciate you for it. Now, let's talk about reading coverages. I was watching USC versus Arizona State a couple weeks ago, and Joel Klatt, who I think is a fantastic announcer, by the way, made a point about why Keaton Slovis was struggling versus drop eight coverage. It's because in the air raid system, you are going through progression reads. You are not reading coverage in that system. Receivers are reading coverage in terms of getting open, not overall coverage globally. And I haven't run the system, but having talked to Mike Leach a bunch, receivers are reading green grass, green grass reads, trying to find open space. As a quarterback, you're kind of hanging on them to find that open space. Well, when you're dropping eight in coverage, there's not a lot of open space. And Joel Klatt made the point that if you're going through pure progression reads, you are late and it's hard to find that space in drop eight coverage. He, he put it as succinctly as I've heard an announcer put it on TV. It makes it hard in progression reading offenses to be efficient, to have anticipation when you don't know where the next open hole is going to be as you're just scanning across the field. Now, if you read coverages, though you know where those open holes are going to be. And I had this discussion with Mike Leach over adult beverages one night in that if you know what the coverage is as a quarterback, even if you have a progression that one, runs through one, two, three, four, five, if I know what the coverage is, I can eliminate one, three, and five. Now I'm just working two and four with my throw. And if you can do that, then it looks like you have great anticipation. Instead, really what you're doing is math. It's deduction. If they drop into certain coverages, I know certain zones are going to be closed. Those receivers that are running into those zones are going to be covered, but X number of zones are going to be open, and I can work with those three guys. That's essentially the difference between progression reading and coverage reading. Now, let's hit the film. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. We're going to drop a single play, and you'll see how reading coverages means you have much greater anticipation as a quarterback. So let's say that you're in a progression offense, and... This is your route. You've got go route, first progression. Out route, second progression. Over route, number three. Hook, number four. As a quarterback, you go through it in exactly that way. I look for the go route. I look for the out route. I look for the over, and then I look for the hook. Now, that's the way you're going to go through your progression. If I'm a quarterback and I'm reading coverage and I come up and see this, now, here's what I'm thinking. I've got a corner. It looks like he's going to roll in the flat. He's going to be the flat defender. If this team runs three cloud, meaning corners down low, this guy's a third player, this guy's a deep third player, this guy's a deep third player. This could be three cloud. This is a nickel player. And in this set, the way that you would call it is, this is your Sam. This is your Mike. This would be your nickel Will. Or just your nickel defender. Depends on how your team talks about it. But 
as we move this forward, see the official back out, and watch what happens here. Nickel Will steps down in, and the safety steps over the top. Now as a quarterback, I'm not in that progression system anymore. I am reading coverage. And again, let's drop that route. I've got the go route over the top. I've got the quick out by my tight end or Y type. I've got the over by number two to the field. And I've got the hook by number one to the field. What am I thinking? Well, I don't have to go through my progression anymore because I'm understanding what they're doing on defense. As I run this into the boundary, I know in cover six, this corner is going to be the flat defender. His job is to reroute or change the timing with this receiver. But as it goes vertical, he's going to get his eyes back in for number two. This is number two. So he comes into that flat area. This corner is going to drop off. This safety, as a half player, doesn't have to hang on the hash. This is what's called cover six. Some teams denote it differently. If you run the half side to the tight end, they may call it cover eight. Or if you just call it one coverage for the same look, it could be cover six. Why? This is cover two with the half and a roll corner. And this is cover four with the two quarters on the bottom side. So two plus four equals six. No matter how you denote it, whether you call it eight because the half side is over the Y, or you call it cover six, responsibilities remain the same. Flat defender, half defender. Now, as this goes vertical, this safety doesn't have to hang tight to the hash because he knows anything that comes vertical here, this safety in cover six has to, what they call, cut it or jump it. And so he's protected on his backside from anything vertical by a quarter safety. And so as a result, the half safety can overplay this. This go route, if I throw it as a quarterback, this safety, even if I throw the perfect ball, is going to give this guy a big headache. The flat route, if I throw that out, the quick out to the tight end, this corner, as he comes off and turns back, is going to give that Y player, Y type or H type player, a big headache. So I know, since I'm reading coverage, I can eliminate that side of the throw as a quarterback. What does that leave me? Well, here on the back side, I've got the over. That's great. I've got the hook. Also good routes because the flat is widely undefended against cover six. So over, hook. Now, what is my key as a quarterback? This is where anticipation comes in. I know that this is canceled. I know that this is canceled because... That guy's going to hit him, and this guy is going to hit him and leave a mark in his helmet. So what do I want to do? I've read coverage. I want to keep my eyes front side and hold these linebackers front side to make this throwing lane as big as possible. This nickel will has the responsibility of getting out to the flat, maybe rerouting this if he can, but this is his whole area down here. So as a quarterback, I want to keep my eyes front side, and hold these backers and leave myself a huge window to throw into. Now, in the system that they're running here, this quarterback is a progression read system. And so he's reading one, two, three, four. As a result, he stays front side, which is what you want to do with these backers, but then he's late coming back because he's working through that progression. Let's run it through one time, and I'll show you what I mean. Gives the run fake, one, two, about to stick that third foot in the ground. Eyes are still front side because it's one, two. Because it's progression, he's gone through both those reads, and as he comes back, he's going to hitch, which allows that guy to clear through the window. But what it also does is as soon as he hitches, these backers react, and they close down that window. As a result, he ends up throwing this ball high over the top. As a quarterback, sometimes your body reacts to what your eyes are seeing before you can think about it. And so he sees these backers reacting. He wants to throw this hole, but they close that off really quickly. Hitch, backers close it, he's high. But what if 
He knows. He is coverage reading now. He's eliminated this side entirely because he knows he can't throw those balls because he's got two defenders right where his guys are going. But he knows he's going to come back side. After he gives his fake, he goes one, two, three steps where he can dovetail. And when he sticks that back foot in the ground, he lets it rip. Let's take a look at the window if he does that. One, two, if he dovetails and sticks his foot in the ground and rips this ball right now, look at the windows. Backer doesn't have time to react. He read coverage. Now he's throwing this thing like a seam post or like a slant, a laser beam, just dropping a P right in that hole. This receiver now catches this ball right here, and he's got a lot of room to roam. He can make something happen in the open field. As a result, though, because he's going through a progression read, he hitches, linebackers react, and he comes up and over the top. And that's where coverage can help with your anticipation. I know I can't throw that front side. I'm not going to stay over there. But I'm prepared that when I stick my foot in the ground, I'm coming back side. Let's take a look at it from the end zone one time, and we'll see what I'm talking about with the linebackers. Watch these linebackers. As the quarterback is looking front side, these guys flow with his eyes. So they stay on the hash. If when he hits his third step, one, two, if he dovetails this, sticks that foot in the ground, and lets it rip, all he has to do is turn his head, find this window real quick. As he plants and throws, he's got a big play here. But as he hitches, watch how these linebackers react. He sticks his foot in the ground, hitches. Now, body language, coming this way, reading quarterback's eyes, closing down this window. And so, quarterback reacts. He wants to throw it, but that hitch means he throws it over the top. Had he been reading coverage rather than progression, he sticks that ball in, and it's a pretty big play. As you can see, learning how to read coverage means you can anticipate where your open holes are going to be. If you are a coverage-reading quarterback, you are not watching your routes. You are watching defenders for your keys, and you are understanding how to use your eyes to move those defenders around the field. Once you do that you really got a mastery of your offense. You really have a mastery of the field, and you can anticipate a lot better. If you dug what I did today, if you like X's and O's, if you love football content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. Get notified every time we have new stuff out. It'll help you as a player, as a fan. If you just love the game, it'll help you with your knowledge of football. Give me a thumbs up if you understand why coverage reading is so important for a quarterback now. And leave me a comment down below. Love to hear from you. Finally, remember, share this video out. We're trying to help young athletes. The more you share, more athletes we can affect and we can help. I appreciate you watching. Just wanted to show you the difference between coverage reading for a quarterback to build anticipation and progression reading and why I think coverage reading is better. Hopefully, we improved your football skills today, improved your football IQ today, gave you a little bit of quarterback training, and helped you enjoy the game better. I'll talk to you soon.